As Adolf Hitler ascended to the position of Chancellor of Germany, a dark chapter unfolded in the country's history. Almost immediately, concentration camps emerged within its borders, serving as harrowing sites where some of humanity's most atrocious crimes were committed. These camps, numbering over a thousand, including subcamps, were established throughout the Third Reich. Tragically, millions of lives were lost within their grim confines, enclosed by menacing barbed wire fences. The collective memory of these camps has become synonymous with the Holocaust, the systematic persecution and annihilation of millions of innocent people. In the aftermath of the war, the world sought justice for the horrors perpetrated within those camp walls. Numerous trials were held to hold accountable the individuals who had served as guards and overseers. Among the many trials, one case stood out, shedding light on a shocking revelation that reverberated across the globe. Stathof, a camp located east of the city of Danzig, became the stage for a trial that would forever haunt the collective conscience of humanity. What distinguished this trial from others was the unsettling fact that a significant number of the accused guards were women. Some were startlingly young, which perplexed and disturbed observers around the world. The juxtaposition of youth and participation in such unfathomable acts of mass murder, slaughter and cruelty was deeply unsettling. These women, after enduring the legal proceedings, were ultimately condemned to death, their fates sealed by Heinemann's noose. The scene that unfolded, as these women faced their final moments together, was a stark reminder of the immense scale of human suffering and the capacity for evil that lurks within us all. The sight of a group of condemned women, united by their role in perpetrating unspeakable horrors, left an indelible mark on the collective consciousness of those who bore witness to their fate. In the annals of history, the trial of Stutthof serves as a grim testament to the depths humanity can sink and the necessity of holding individuals accountable for their actions. It stands as a solemn reminder that the face of evil knows no gender and that the most appalling atrocities can be committed by individuals of any age or background. The execution of these women, tragic as it was, symbolized a small measure of justice in a world scarred by unimaginable suffering. Stathoff. On September 2, 1939, as World War I engulfed Europe, a sinister chapter began outside the borders of Germany with the establishment of the Stathoff concentration camp. This camp, intimately connected to the ethnic cleansing of Poland, became a site of unspeakable horrors in the regions of West Prussia and Danzig. Its purpose was to exterminate the Polish elite including politicians, religious leaders, and intellectuals. Even before the invasion of Poland, lists were meticulously compiled, earmarking individuals for arrest. The Nazis had already devised plans for the establishment of camps to hold these prisoners. Initially designed as a civilian camp, Stathof underwent a massive expansion effort, transforming into a labor and education camp akin to the notorious Dachau. Its prisoners, Around 150 in number, consisted of Poles and Jews who had been swiftly apprehended after the outbreak of war. Within a matter of weeks, the inmate population soared to approximately 6,000, predominantly comprising Polish individuals. As the war progressed, the camp received an influx of Jewish prisoners, many of whom were deported from Auschwitz and other Nazi-occupied territories. Over the course of its operation, Stathof witnessed the passage of 110,000 individuals through its menacing gates, hailing from diverse nations. Among the prisoners were Jews from across Europe, as well as resistance fighters, Soviet prisoners of war, communists, psychiatric patients, and countless others. The main camp at Stathof oversaw the management of approximately 40 subcamps during World War II. These subcamps housed different groups of prisoners who were forced to produce goods for various companies. Some of these companies were directly involved in the German war machine, 
exploiting slave labor to manufacture components. Notably, an armaments factory operated within the camp, and later in the war, a Fock Wolf aircraft factory was established within its confines. Conditions within Stathof were abhorrent, characterized by brutal treatment and extreme hardship. Disease ravaged the camp, and starvation claimed the lives of thousands of prisoners. Devastating typhus epidemics struck in 1942 and 1944, leading to a series of selections. During these horrifying events, SS officers and doctors singled out sick or weakened prisoners to be sent to the small gas chamber located on the premises. Within the barbed wire fences of Stathoff concentration camp, human suffering reached its nadir. The camp stood as a testament to the callousness of the Nazi regime, as countless lives were extinguished and unspeakable atrocities were perpetrated. The story of Stathoff serves as a chilling reminder of the depths of human cruelty and the importance of never forgetting the horrors that took place within its walls. Executions. This camp played a pivotal role in the ethnic cleansing of Poland, specifically targeting the Polish elite, including politicians, religious leaders, and intellectuals in the West Prussia and Danzig regions. Even prior to the invasion of Poland, lists had been compiled, earmarking individuals for arrest. The Nazis had planned to open camps following the invasion to accommodate these prisoners. Originally intended for civilian detainees, Stathoff underwent significant expansion and transformed into a labor and educational camp akin to Dachau subjecting inmates to grueling forced labor. Upon its opening, around 150 Polish and Jewish prisoners, swiftly apprehended after the outbreak of war, were brought to Stathoff. Within weeks, the prisoner population skyrocketed to approximately 6,000, consisting predominantly of Polish individuals. As the war progressed, the camp received an influx of Jewish prisoners, many of whom were deported from Auschwitz and other Nazi-occupied territories. Stathof became a place of immense suffering and death, with an estimated 65,000 prisoners losing their lives within its confines. The guards exhibited extreme sadism, inflicting barbaric punishments on the inmates. Among them was Jenny Wanda Barkman, who, despite being just 24 years old at the time of her execution, became notorious for her horrifying treatment of prisoners. Bartman was responsible for selecting victims to be sent to the gas chambers and frequently beat female prisoners to death. She was not alone in her sadistic behavior, as many guards mercilessly clubbed and battered inmates to their demise. The camp's conditions were brutal, with rampant disease and starvation clinging the lives of thousands. Typhus epidemics in 1942 and 1944 resulted in mass deaths and prompted selections, during which SS officers and doctors chose the sick and weak to be sent to the small on-site gas chamber. Executions were a chilling reality within the camp's boundaries. The small gas chamber, utilizing the deadly Zyklon B, became operational in June 1944. It is estimated that around 4,000 prisoners, predominantly Jewish women and children, were murdered within its confines before the camp's evacuation. In late January 1945, as the war neared its end, a comprehensive evacuation of Stathoff was ordered. Approximately 50,000 prisoners, mostly Jews, were forcibly marched out of the camp. Around 5,000 of them were compelled to undertake a grueling walk from the camp to the Baltic coast, where they were ruthlessly shot by guards as they entered the water. Others marched towards eastern Germany, but were cut off by Soviet forces, forcing them to return to Stathoff. The death march, marked by horrific treatment by SS guards, lack of food, and freezing winter conditions, claimed the lives of thousands. In the months that followed, the remaining prisoners were transported from the camp by sea, where more were thrown overboard and shot. The evacuation of Stathoff resulted in the deaths of an estimated 25,000 prisoners. Stathoff was finally liberated on May 9, 1945, but only a mere hundred prisoners were found, those who had managed to hide during the death march. In the aftermath of World War II, 
Numerous war crimes trials were held to bring the perpetrators to justice. While the Nuremberg trials targeted high-ranking Nazi leaders, lesser-known trials, such as the Stathof trials, focused on the guards and officials responsible for the atrocities committed at Stathof. Spanning from 1946 to 1947, these trials took place in Gans. Despite approximately 2,000 SS staff working at Stathof, only 72 SS officers and six female overseers stood trial. During the first trial, the six women accused of being off Saharans at the camp, including Jenny Wanda Bartman, Elizabeth Becker, Wanda Klaff, Ewo Pardis, Gerda Steinhoff, and Erna Bailhart faced prosecution. Inside the courtroom, witness testimonies and substantial evidence were presented. It was noted that the women, particularly Jenny Barkman, displayed callous indifference throughout the trial. Barkman, in particular, appeared more concerned with her appearance, smirking during the presentation of horrifying evidence and even flirting with the guards. Jenny Barkman, Elizabeth Becker, Wanda Klaff, Ewo Pardis, and Gerda Steinhoff were all sentenced to death, while Erna Bailhart received a five-year prison term. On July 4, 1946, all those condemned were transported to Gdansk, specifically to the Biskupia Gorka, a large hill in the city. Under the watchful eyes of Soviet officials, they were brought to the gallows by truck. A massive crowd, approximately 200,000 people, had gathered to witness the execution. The gallows, of considerable size, allowed for multiple simultaneous hangings. Jenny Barkman, the first to meet her fate, stood under the gallows wearing a simple dress. Her hands and ankles were bound and a noose was placed around her neck. As the truck drove away, leaving her suspended in midair, Barkman's struggles for breath, twitching limbs, and the loss of her shoe unfolded before the crowd's eyes. Her life slipped away, and she became the first of 11 condemned individuals executed on the hill that day. The women were left hanging, while the men were executed alongside them. The public spectacle of the 11 bodies swinging from the towering gallows offered a measure of retribution for the horrors inflicted at Stathof concentration camp. The execution of the guards served as a poignant reminder that their complicity in mass suffering and the murder of prisoners would not go unpunished. Stathof concentration camp bore witness to an immense loss of life, rampant cruelty, and the depths of human depravity. The guards, through their sadistic actions, left an indelible mark on the memories of those who suffered within the camp's confines. Justice was served, albeit belatedly, as those responsible faced the consequences for their actions. The executions of the women guards, responsible for the selection and murder of prisoners, were a symbolic reckoning for the countless lives they had callously extinguished. Thanks for watching the video, and if you found it informative, Please like and subscribe to Time Capsule for similar content. We look forward to sharing more knowledge with you in the future. Until then, take care.